everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone who has joined my channel over the past few weeks, over the past month in December. Happy New Year and welcome to my channel. My name is Amina. If you are not subscribed, then please make sure you press the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you guys a penny, but hopefully you'll learn something new from me in today's video or in the videos that I'm going to be posting in the future. So we are in January. It is January the 10th today, specifically January the 10th which means that there is approximately four months before we hit the exam periods. Before we hit May, where GCSE exams begin, A-level exams begin, university undergraduate exams begin, it is a time where students are just full blast, revision mode, exam mode, and cramming mode for some people. Now I know how stressful this time can be. I myself was a student not that long ago, and I now teach as well. I do also now see students in that position where they are cramming information, getting really stressed out, and I just thought I'd give you a bit of a four month countdown. Things that you should be doing now, things that you should be thinking about now, things that you need to be setting up now in order to help you alleviate that stress a little bit, in order to help you feel a little bit more prepared and in order to give you the best possible opportunity to do well in your exams and end up in the best university that you want to end up in, end up doing whatever it is that you want to end up in and not being let down by simply not being organised enough or not realising how soon exams really are. I don't want to scare you, I do want you to enjoy yourself, you, are, you guys are still young and I know that most of my videos are targeted to PhD students and kind of postgraduate students but I know that I have an audience that watch me that are thinking about doing a PhD or are still doing their GCSEs or their A-levels and thinking about what to do and you know in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really matter. If you get a couple of grades less than what you expect, you can still go on to do great things. Know that everyone wants to achieve their best. And so I have written a list of eight things, eight things that you should be thinking about doing now in order to give you the best possible opportunity to do well come May. So the first thing that you should be doing is starting to make your revision notes or your flashcards or whatever it is that you use to help yourself revise when it comes to the last minute, you should be doing that. Research has shown that writing things down means that you have a greater conceptual understanding because typically writing is slower than reading or even than typing which means that you spend longer thinking about that concept or that aspect that you are writing and it does lead to a stronger association in your mind and leads to better memory in general. Handwriting forces your brain to really mentally engage with that piece of information. Again, really helping you because in your exam, you're not typing, you're not going to be reading, you will be writing things down, writing sentences, ticking boxes. So by kind of doing that already, it does mean that you've given yourself that practice and it's not a new Thing for you to sit in an exam and write a sentence. So it's definitely important to start to write things down. I know that technology has taken us away from this, but it's really important to make sure that you're writing things down, you're trying to form sentences in your mind via your revision notes, via making your revision cards, for example. I also find that the word revision means that you are revising something. You're going back to something that you've seen. Now the problem is when it comes to exams and students in April start to cram information, you are in fact learning it for the first time, you're not actually revising it. Yes, you might have seen it in school a year ago, two years ago, but you've forgotten that piece of information. So in, at this point in April, you are now relearning that information. You are no longer revising, you are learning it. So if you are spending April, a month before the exam, learning new information, when exactly are you going to get time to revise it? Bearing in mind that you probably have a few different subjects, different modules, things that you find harder than other topics. So it's really important that you spend this time now, in January, in February, in March, revising the topics, rereading them, going over them, learning things that you might have forgotten or learning things that you might have not understood. So then when it gets to April, you can actually revise. 
you've learned that information, you've written that down your best notes, and you're now ready to revise. The second thing you should be doing is finding out how much content you have left to learn. So if, for example, you're in your second year of your A-levels, you might have a few more weeks left of content in your maths A-level, for example. You might have already finished, it depends on your school. So find out how much content you have left and start planning a revision timetable. You can devise yourself a little revision schedule. So every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm going to study for two and a half hours after school. And on Friday, that will be my chill day where I don't study and then on Saturday and Sunday I'll wake up at 5 a.m. 6 a.m. study for a few hours go out with my mates and then come back and do a bit more in the afternoon and kind of give yourself a bit of a schedule that you can stick to make it realistic that's the most important thing making it realistic because by saying to yourself I'm gonna revise I don't know five hours a day if you do fail to do that you will demotivate yourself and make yourself feel like you're not capable of kind of meeting those expectations and Something is better than nothing. It's better to learn one thing a day than to not learn anything. So building on to the second point, the third point is make yourself a revision schedule. So you need to make one that's a pre-Easter schedule. because The schedule will change once April arrives and your work obviously intensifies and you no longer are in school anymore and you've got more time during the day. So that schedule will have to change. So make yourself a revision schedule, a study schedule, where it is applicable for the week weekdays where you're going to school, you're going to go to college or you're going to university and you can use that schedule in order to work around your time, in order to figure out what time it is that you have. You should be not only mentally active but also physically active because I think it's very important for your health and that's something that we'll be talking about in a few points later. Because come Easter, revision will intensify so it's really important to give yourself a schedule that you can stick to before that intensification occurs because trust me it will get very intense very quickly. The fourth thing you should be doing is getting familiar with any equipment that you might need to use during your exam. So the thing that comes to mind for me is in maths you need to use scientific calculators or graphic calculators if you're on A-level or maybe doing further maths. They can draw graphs for you, they can solve equations. It's very important that you're able to recognise the scope of ability that that calculator has for you. That's not going to happen overnight, especially once it gets to like a few weeks before the exam, you won't really have the time to play around with a, with a calculator and also you won't be in school anymore, so you won't have the opportunity to speak to your teachers and find out how do I use this, what's the best method for this, what's the shortcut for this. Right now it's still a little bit slow, it's, it hasn't quite ramped up as yet. Also find out what information you are given in the exams and find out what information you need to memorise. So you might have a formula sheet in science or in maths for example, or in physics, you might have a formula sheet, however you might have some formulas that you definitely need to know. So put those formulas onto a, sh a small revision card and at least you know this is what I need to memorise and this is what I don't need to memorise. Make sure that's very clear because you don't want to waste time memorising a formula that you will be given in the exam. It's really important to differentiate that and if you don't know, just go and ask your teacher. They are more than happy to help you and they'll give you a full list of formulas that you need to know for the exam and formulas that you will be given during the exam. So the fifth thing that you should be doing is starting to complete whole timed exam papers. So this really depends on the point that I was saying earlier as to how much you've completed of your course and how much curricula you've got left to learn and how much content you've got left to, to cover. But if you have covered most of the content then you can go ahead and give yourself a timed exam. You can search online for your exam board, so for example AQA, biology, paper one, past papers, and I'm sure you'll find loads of websites, and if I, I know a few actually, and I'll, I'll, I'll link a few down below where you can access past papers for free, and also the mark scheme. It's really important that you're able to familiarise yourself with completing exams in timed exam condition. The rule of thumb is sort of, the number of marks is sort of the number of minutes, so five marks is kind of five minutes, that's kind of the rule of thumb. Um, so a 60 mark paper usually is a 60 minute paper. And then do make sure that you go and mark it. So access the mark scheme, look at how the mark scheme is laid out, look at the key points that they ask you to write about, the key terms they've asked you to write about, key words that you must include. There are certain key words that have to be included in your answer, otherwise you won't get the mark, even if your description is correct. You do need to include certain key terms in science, 
in maths, in English, in most subjects there are keywords that you have to include within your answers. Remember, you don't just have one exam, you've got so many subjects and so the earlier you start that process, the better it is and the more organised you'll be and again, like I said, the, le the less stressed you'll be when it comes close to the exam. So along the same point as what I just mentioned, the sixth thing that you should be doing is completing exam questions, so not even just the whole paper, but just small exam questions. So let's say you just completed a, a certain topic in class, you can just do some questions on that topic. Textbook questions are not always a good representation of what they'll be like in the exam, but it's really good to attempt actual exam papers in timed conditions. Um, and I know a few websites for maths that I'll link down below where you can pick out topic specific papers where they only have algebra or they only have quadratics or they'll only have Pythagoras for example. I think at this point you know there's only four months left so kind of familiarizing yourself with everything that has got to do with exams, timing, papers, answering, writing, thinking, memorization, formula, like everything to do with exams. Then when you get to the exam you, you won't be as overwhelmed and you won't be as worried and as stressed out um, because you have got a little bit comfortable with the concept already. So the seventh thing that you should be doing is waking up a little bit early. So try to get yourself into a habit slowly of waking up early because when it comes to the exam period you will have to do 8.30am exams or 8am exams or 9am exams depending on what school or university to your rats. An 8.30 a.m. exam doesn't mean that you get there at 8.30. No, you actually have to get there before, at least half an hour before, at least one hour before, in order to take your stuff off, in order to have your briefing by your head of the subject or your head of year, in order to get your equipment. You might have forgotten something to just really quickly go and grab something. You don't want to be panicked in that moment. So it's really important to get yourself in the habit of waking up a little bit earlier than you do now. Let's say now you wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning to leave at 7.45 or 8. Try to wake up an hour before. Wake up at 6 o'clock. Get yourself ready. Have yourself breakfast. And then either go to school if your school opens that early. Or just stay at home and sit down and look through something. Read a book even. Just kind of engage your mind and get yourself used to waking up early. The last thing you want is to have to wake up early on the exam day and then just feel really groggy, not feel used to it, your mind feels closed and you're just, just not ready for that kind of timing. So it's really important to get yourself into that habit as early as possible. And the last thing that you should be doing in this month and the next couple of months is eating well, sleeping on time and sleeping well and also staying fit, physically fit. Just those three things mean that your brain is going to work smarter. It's not going to work harder but it works smarter. The things that you put into your body, the nutrients that you put into your body, the amount of sleep you get is really really important. Lack of sleep has been shown to have such a huge impact on so many things including your mental capacity and your ability to memorise and your ability to study and your, and your ability to concentrate. So it's really important that you get a really good night's sleep every single night. Um, if that means going to bed a little bit earlier, go for it. It's better to do that now during the times where, like I said, low risk, that much going on. And then come March and April, you can maybe shorten those hours a little bit, but at least your body has not been suffering over the past few months for a lack of sleep. So really do get yourself into a really good sleeping habit. Switch off your phone, put your phone somewhere else, get rid of it. Train your mind to work in a better way. And a relaxed student means a happier student, means a less stressed out student. And hopefully you will do amazingly in your exams. So that is the end of my four month countdown videos. And I'm gonna be kind of focusing a little bit on GCSEs and A-levels over the next few weeks. I know that you guys in, are in that slightly panicked, slightly bothered period at the moment right now, especially with all your mocks and your PPEs etc. I'll be doing a few videos like how to make good flashcards, how to take good notes from textbooks, and how to get a good night's sleep for example. I'll be doing a few videos like that. So if you do want to see more from me then don't forget to press the subscribe button and don't forget to like this video. And also if you have any suggestions as of things that you want me to film and topics that you want me to talk about or help you with trying to figure out anything to do with education really, then I'm down for helping you with that. And remember, work smarter, not harder. Bye.